And I'm really excited to be here to talk to you all about how the Internet of Things relates to augmented reality and the impact that I believe that's going to have on the world, from evolution to revolution. So I want you to imagine a world where the Internet of Things is not just embedded in devices, in your home, in the workplace, but is actually made visible to you through a digital interface that seamlessly connects you to these uh, objects, to these places, to other people through a visual, intuitive, spatial interface. That is what augmented reality can do. So imagine briefly that you are a technician and it's your job to fix wind turbines out in the field, remote, you know, away from the office. And you have to climb 100 meters into the air and repair this complex machine uh, with just the equipment that you have on you and your team. And imagine that you're doing this, not today, but 10 years in the future, with the current skill set that you have right now, as in no training. So you have complete confidence when you're out there re repairing this wind turbine, because you know that you have an augmented reality, Internet of Things connected wearable device that is going to give you step-by-step -step instructions right on top of the job or the task that's being done, walking you through exactly how it fits together, what the components are, and what the tools are that you need. This is the vision. So when we started Daiquiri, we realized that there were only a few hundred people in the world that had the technical capabilities required to build augmented reality content. We wanted to see a world where augmented reality content was everywhere and was connecting you with everything around you. But that was, would not be possible if only a few hundred people had the capability to build content in the medium. So we looked at another audience that had the potential to create augmented reality content. One million people in the United States use 3D design tools every day in their job to create content. So we thought if we can create a tool that lets not just a few hundred people with a PhD in something called computer vision, but rather a million people that use AutoCAD, Maya, 3D Studio Max, all kinds of 3D design tools across industries, then we can empower a much greater population to be able to create content in the medium. And we're closer to that vision of having information connected around you visually so that you can learn about anything around you. Then we looked at, what if we could go bigger? Last year, 18 million developers in the world used HTML, JavaScript, or CSS. And this is an underrepresented number. And then we decided, well, we need to look to the future. This is my favorite number. 30 million is not the number of people in the world who play Minecraft. It is just the number of children in the world today who play Minecraft, who are already creating in 3D and are going to expect a world where they can create and interact digitally in 3D. So we decided that this platform was going to be quite necessary in order to get people into the medium and able to create content. But we realized that there was still an experience problem for the worker, for the technician who is fixing the wind turbine. Because when you're 100 meters in the air, you can't hold a device. You can't hold an iPad. So it needs to be wearable. It needs to be something that you can adopt easily, that's intuitive, that's comfortable, that makes sense for the, for the task at hand. And we decided that we needed to solve this problem and that we had the skills to solve this problem. And we uh, have designed and built an augmented reality wearable device that replaces the hard hat with uh, essentially the hard hat 2.0 with connected sensors and a display that allows you to see augmented reality in your field of view. 
Now, the reason why we decided to go after the industrial side is that the form factor, first of all, makes a lot of sense. You have a, a aesthetic and adoption issues with con the consumer market, right? Because um, you want it to, if you're going to wear something all day as a consumer, you want it to be very comfortable, you want it to be not noticeable. But if you're wearing it for work, the adoption and the form factor are not a problem. It's simply replacing the hard hat that you were already wearing as a safety device. And importantly, the ROI is very high. We can show that uh, augmented reality will transform work in the future because of the very high rate of ROI that we can provide to manufacturing and automation and energy and transportation and those types of industries. So this is why we, why we focus on the future of work. Right now, work has some negative connotations. We think of it as repetitive, laborious, and disconnected. And everyone here knows that when you're in a workplace that is disconnected, that is dangerous, and it is inefficient. We see work not as laborious and a place that you don't want to be, but rather as a work of art, rather as the work of your life that is meaningful, your life's work. This is what work can be. It can be purposeful, it can be connected, and it can be empowered through augmented reality, connecting you with the data that's found in the Internet of Things. This change with the Daiquiri Smart Helmet is happening now. And there are other use cases, including assembly, and data visualization that are being used by organizations like Boeing and SRI today. The, the impact is massive. 30% reduction in assembly time and a 94% reduction in errors when assembling complex equipment and machinery. So the history of consumer wearable devices, is, the, the history of innovation is that most of the things that affect our lives on a daily basis started off in the workplace. That's why it's so important. These are some examples of devices that were created for the purpose of work. And then through the cycle, they became uh, disseminated and we learned through uh, serendipity, through innovation, through conversations, through imagining different use cases where they could be applicable to every aspect of our lives. Through connection, through opening our eyes to new knowledge, we believe that it's possible to create a concept that we call cognitive literacy. If you can look around you at anything in, in, in your environment and see the information behind it, you will have the ability to make connections like never before. At Daiquiri, we're not just working on augmented reality, authoring tools, and hardware. We're looking at the future holistically, a ne with next generation wearables, solving the most important problems with computer vision and brain-computer interfaces, and much, much more. What if you could put on a helmet and know how to do any job? What if we could accomplish, what could we accomplish if the world had over seven billion artists and scientists? The, the idea underlying all of this is that humans are really good at creativity and decision making. Let the computer take care of the back end processing and give us the data to make the best decisions in real time in the, in the moment where the job is being done. If you can change the way a person works, you can change their entire life. So we're very, very excited to be focusing on work in the future at Daiquiri, and I'm also excited to announce that we're opening an office right here in Dublin. We announced it yesterday, 
We're actually one block away from here on Sir John Rogerson's Key. If you are interested in trying on the smart helmet and building apps for the future of work, we're hosting an event uh, this evening and all day tomorrow at the DCU Innovation Campus for developers to connect with the developer community, to connect with um, systems integrators, development shops, independent developers. If you write code, if you are excited about the future of work, please come and connect with us. Thank you for having me.